We're picking up again, boys. Nick Diaz is back, and so is Tony Ferguson. Sadly, they're not fighting each other. That would have been the perfect fight, and hopefully they make a last-minute change. But the two legends are going to be fighting on the same card, and I'm happy to see them compete as long as it makes sense. You know, as long as they're not getting thrown into the slaughterhouse, we are Nick Diaz army in blades and shades forever, man. Yo, if Nick Diaz and Tony Ferguson actually pull it off, everybody's going to be celebrating. It won't even matter what happens in the main event. The main event is if Nick Diaz and Tony Tony Ferguson win. That would be the end of the card. The main event is just a cherry on top, whatever happens there. Or with Mackenzie Dern, cherries on top. And these two are going to be fighting on the same card on August 3rd. It's going to be the Abu Dhabi Fight Night card, headlined by Corey Sanhagen versus Umar Nurmagomedov, which is a fantastic fight in its own way, too. Rankings-wise, it doesn't make really any sense. I don't know why Corey would even accept it. In fact, Corey is the one that's calling out Umar now. And he got his wish. He got Umar. When I think he should have maybe look at someone above him if not just around his ranking if not even that wait for a title shot because he deserves it in terms of merit you know he's beaten the contenders he had some duds but this fight's gonna be a test especially for umar going up against one of the best 135ers in the world after beating Baxat and haoni barcelos is a huge step up in competition you know Corey sandigan is a different beast compared to anybody umar has ever fought before he's well-rounded he's developing a good wrestling game hopefully he uses that defensively pick the correct battle stay on the feet with umar do not go to the ground with the guy but umar's pretty nasty there too man he's got some really good kicks awkward timing with some of his punches how he knocked out honey barcelos but he did get dropped by backside backside is a bit underrated it's not that you know umar got caught by some nobody backside's actually a pretty good puncher or should i say a ferocious puncher you know that guy throws everything into his shots and he caught umar pretty clean Corey sanegan punches a bit differently you know he takes off different angles a lot more technical with what he throws out there and he mixes up with knees and high kicks switching stances constantly he's long and tall this is a very different kind of fighter in every facet like there's no one close to what Corey can do that umar has fought before it's not even close in comparison and if umar gets it done i mean hats off to him unless he lay in praise now that is a skill deficiency of Corey if he can't get up from the bottom but it's not gonna be a great performance for umar if he wins by that method we want to see a good performance out of both fighters we want to see what they can both do in all facets of their game without resorting to boring the entire world for it you know Corey Sanhagen had that performance one time I don't think he's gonna do it this time of course he's going up against the wrestler here but we also do not want to see that go the other way great fight though I cannot wait to see it I cannot wait to see how Corey's gonna look how Umar is gonna handle this puzzle that is Corey Sanhagen now if Corey Sanhagen wins it's a no-brainer he has to get a title shot if Umar beats Corey Sanhagen goes from number 10 into the top five, possibly even the top three, I don't think you give him a title shot. I mean, it would be pretty crazy, right? Then again, they did that for Sean O'Malley. O'Malley didn't really beat anybody until he fought Peter Yan. And he jumped off from, what what was it, like the top 15, top 10? Goes up against a number one contender, gets the official win, even though it was a controversial decision, and then he got a title shot. So it wouldn't be the first time we've seen that at Bantamweight. But I think Umar would probably need one more win to get a title shot. I think he could fight Peter Yan or the winner of Davison and Cheeto. I think that's the fight you could make. But given how bantamweight is right now, Sean O'Malley's fighting Marab. Peter Yan's still injured. Maybe he fights Umar. Who knows? But then what do you do with the winner of Cheeto and Davis and Figueredo? Henry Cejudo's calling out Rob Font. Jose Aldo's back in the mix. Wait, maybe you do that. Maybe they do Jose Aldo versus the winner of Figueredo and Cheeto and then do Peter Yan versus Umar. And whoever gets the best performance out of those two fights gets a title shot. There you go. Like a mini bantamweight tournament. It's perfect. And the co-main event is Nick Diaz versus Vicente Luque, which is also five rounds. They are really catering to Nick Diaz with the five rounder here. And Vicente Luque has been sadly declining. His chin is not the same after the Jeff Neal fight and all the other wars he went through in his career. That brain hemorrhage changed Vicente Luque. His body doesn't even respond the same way after taking a punch. Like how he curled up on the ground against Joaquin Buckley. He resorted to a lot of wrestling to defeat RDA. Now, strategically, that's a smart move, considering that uh, 170 years have a, a big advantage over RDA when they go with a wrestling game plan. But it's against Luque's general style. He never really fights that way. And it's crazy enough to say that Nick Diaz might actually be the favorite in this. Even though he didn't look great against Robbie Lawler, 
physically. He was able to put together good combinations, just like vintage Nick Diaz, ripping up clean body shots, just letting the hands fly, and I do not think Luque is going to respond to those that well. Now, if this is Luque in his prime, I'm 100% picking Luque to win it. But if Luque is given unusual bad reactions to these punches, Nick Diaz might actually take KO him in the later rounds. And if Diaz wins, if big bro Diaz wins, that's going to be so hype, man. I want to see a Nick Diaz victory. I want to see his hand get raised again. It'd be tough to see Vicente Luque lose, man. I do not want to see him get knocked out again or TKO'd. It's so sad to see that decline of his, but to see Nick Diaz finish off with a win would be insane. Yo, if Nick Diaz wins, watch when he calls out Leon Edwards. Or wait, what if he called out Conor McGregor? We get a 2.0 of the you took everything I worked for interview from uh, Nate Diaz. The big brother comes to avenge the little brother against um, against Conor McGregor. That would be actually pretty crazy. But Nick absolutely is going to call out someone if he beats Luke, right? There's no way he wins and doesn't mention any other fighter that he wants to go up against. If Nick Diaz beats Vicente Luque, he's going to be ranked in the top 15 as Luque right now is number 14. What do you do with him after? You could give him a Conor McGregor fight. You could give him a Tony Ferguson fight if both of them win. Maybe do him and Colby Covington. Maybe something like that. It could draw some pretty big numbers. I guarantee Joaquin Buckley will call on Nick Diaz if Nick beats Luque. Watch, Buckley's going to start calling him out and Nick Diaz is not going to respond to him at all like he doesn't even exist. They're going to be talking to Nick Diaz in an interview after. Oh, did you hear Joaquin Buckley has been calling you out? Uh, Buckley, uh, yeah, he's a pretty good fighter. Uh, who's that? Then we have Davis and Figueredo, the former flyweight champion, versus Cheeto Vera. Amazing fight. I cannot wait for this. The only bummer thing about it is we're not seeing Peter Jan versus Cheeto. That was the fight to make, but Jan's got some pretty bad injuries. I think Figgies are going to take him down and hold him, get good positions, land some good ground and pound shots, threaten with some rear naked chokes. Cheeto's pretty hard to submit, but he's so incredibly inactive in the stand-up, and seeing the way that Corey Sandigam took him down over and over again, dominate on top, I can only imagine Figueroa does something similar. And Figgy is super technical in his Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, more so when he's in the advantage, when he He's the one that's controlling the positions and going for the submissions, land the ground and pound. He does some excellent work, man. I just wish Cheeto got more active with his hands, man. I wish he threw more. I can only imagine how, how much success this guy would have if he just threw his punches more, walked his opponents down with intelligent defense instead of just waiting for the big shot and hoping his opponent just makes some kind of big mistake like slipping a banana peel before he throws a punch at them. I'm a huge Cheeto Vera fan, but it's so frustrating to be a Cheeto Vera fan when this guy's just not throwing. And I know that's his style. That's just the way he fights. But the potential that he has with just making adjustments to his style is what all Cheeto fans want to see him do. Should be a great fight, though. I think it's going to be interesting, especially if Cheeto is able to snipe Figueroa for overextending or lowering his guard when he's throwing punches because he will do that sometimes. Figgy is not as tricky to hit as Sean O'Malley is. We got some Mackenzie Dern action. Always like watching her. Mackenzie Dern's fighting Lupi Godinez and um, Godinez is probably going to win that fight. I don't know, dude. I've watched every Mackenzie Dern fight. As far as I paid attention, she's been undefeated. And then the first fight on the main card is Tony Ferguson versus Michael Chiesa. This might be a better kind of matchup for Tony to go up against. Not someone who's going to knock him out, most likely. I mean, Michael Chiesa has shown some impressive power in his hands. I mentioned before how he dropped Jorge Masvidal in the lightweight division. But Chiesa's on a three-loss streak. He just got submitted by Kevin Holland before they lost to Sean Brady, before that got submitted by Vicente Luque back in 2021. This guy has not been too active. His last fight was in July of 2023. He didn't fight at all in 2022. He did have three fights in 2021 though, but it's only a three loss streak. Tony is sadly on his seventh. We want to see him retire by now. If he's fighting though, I'm always going to be excited for him. I always want to see him perform. I always want to see him do well. If he chooses to get in there, we got to back him up. Like the soldiers behind a general. But getting submitted or losing a decision to Michael Chiesa has to be Tony Ferguson's retirement. Like, he got submitted by Bobby Green, man. He got choked out. If Bobby Green is submitting you on the ground, I can only imagine Michael Chiesa would do the same. Chiesa's gonna be bigger than him, man. It's gonna be tough for Tony to stop the takedowns, I think. Especially given his age. Now, if this was prime Tony Ferguson, Chiesa doesn't have a chance of beating him. But those days are long gone for Tony. And um, maybe he gets a second win. Maybe he, he rejuvenates himself like how he looked in the first round against Michael Chandler. But yeah, Chiesa's probably gonna take him down and submit him. But what happens with the winner of this fight so if tony wins and let's say nick wins then you have them fight each other but what if conor mcgregor looks bad right if conor doesn't look that great loses the michael chandler then let's do conor versus tony 
if Michael Chiesa beats Tony Ferguson, they can maybe do the rematch with Luke if Luke doesn't retire. Well, it's going to depend if Luke beats Nick Diaz or not. They could do a fight with him and Neil Magny. So the UFC Fight Night card in Abu Dhabi is pretty stacked so far. We only have the main card. And honestly, that's all we need. It looks great already. It would have probably been better if Nick fought Tony and then Luke and Chiesa have the rematch. But the only sad thing about that is Nick or Tony would have to lose. One of them. The gamble with this kind of matchup that they're doing is that maybe both of them loses. Who knows? I think Nick Diaz has a better chance on beating Luque than Tony does beating Chiesa. But as they say, power is the last thing to go. And Tony Ferguson in the welterweight division has always had more power. Evidently, when you saw him on Ultimate Fighter and even before. And you can see that he trusts his power a lot more. Like when he fought Nate Diaz, even though he didn't look great, he did look old in the fight. He was swinging that overhand very heavy. And can you imagine if he just cracked Michael Chiesa with a shot like that, putting him down, Dars chokes him, gets on top of the cage in celebration insane man so i cannot wait for this car man it's gonna be crazy fight nights are back we got the whitaker and hamza car which is crazy stacked and now we got the Corey and umar card which is looking really good as well let's get out of the apex let's get some crowds in the arena and start stacking these fight night cards so i cannot wait for it leave in comments below what are your guys opinions on the card who do you guys have winning as an early prediction as we all know it's going to change the closer the fight gets we get to see him in the weigh-ins and what's the reason nick diaz is actually returning back so make sure to give the video a like make sure to subscribe hit the bell for notifications and i'll see you guys in the next video